Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. As my lessons continue to work through the ABRSM Grade 6 Music Theory Workbook, I now turn my attention to Question 5, Exercise 2. And here we are required to analyse a short orchestral extract. In this question, we're asked to comment on the key structure. We look at certain instruments and the role they play within the orchestral extract. We're asked to realise some ornaments that are played by the woodwind. We are also required to transpose a horn part and a clarinet part taken from the extract. We're asked to identify melodic sequences and harmonic sequences. And finally, we are asked to suggest a period of music that would be appropriate for such a piece of music. And we'll look at the score for clues to how to properly answer this question. The full lesson can be found on my Patreon channel. If you visit patreon.com forward slash Sharon Bill, you'll find the full lesson there and you can find links to this lesson in the cards and in the description box below. After this short little video you'll see sample examples of this lesson to show you how I help you to quickly work through the score and find the correct answers. Everything you need to fully understand the information required for this question can be found in my Harmony and Composition textbook. This is available from Amazon and you can find the links to that in the cards and in the description box below. And of course, everything you require can also be found via my website. If you visit www.sharonbill.com, you'll find everything you need right there. Enjoy your studies. Bye. First of all, we need to find a place where the viola plays the highest sounding note with other instruments. So bars 9 to 12, let's see where we're looking. So bars 9, 10, 11, 12. So we're looking at just this short little section here. So here's the viola. Notice the layout of the orchestra. We've got the, well, it's an ensemble, isn't it? We have the woodwind at the top and the viola always comes underneath violin 1 and 2. If there were a cello, that would be here. Here's the double bass, and then this is the continuo, which would accompany this. So you'd have different continuo uh, instruments that might join in here. We'll look at that bit later. However, the, they've uh, taken out the figured bass here, so we've lost those little clues. So where does the, pl the viola play the highest sounding note with other instruments? Now, it may not be the absolute highest note of the viola, but we need the highest note that the viola plays where it joins in with another instrument. And so the, the most obvious point to start is with the highest note. And if that doesn't fit, then we work our way down, don't we? So what note is this here? We have um, a C, D, E, an octave higher. That's an E. That's the E above middle C, and that's an octave higher. And in actual fact, we're already sounding with it on another instrument here. So straight away, we found what we're looking for. And so that is A. We're on now. What do we need to find for E? An inverted dominant pedal. Now, a pedal, a, a pedal is a repeating note when it's in the bass note, as if you were playing the pe pedal on a pipe organ. A dominant pedal means it will be sounding repeatedly or holding it on the dominant note. When it's inverted, that means it's not in the bass part, it's in like either a middle or upper voice. So we need to know what the dominant pedal is. And if we're in A major, then the dominant is E. So we're looking for a repeated held E, note E, and it's gonna be in a middle or upper part. And you know, we've already actually seen this before because here it is. If it was a pedal, it would be down here in the bass, but because it's an inverted pedal, it's up here at the top. Sometimes it might say inner, which would mean giving you a clue it's in an inner part, but inverted basically just means not at the bottom. It's sort of flipped up to the top. So uh, that here is point E and it's holding all the way along there. So we're going to realise these um, trills, aren't we? And generally speaking, in earlier music, a trill will begin on the upper note and um, 
so it would begin on the note above the note written and then oftentimes there would be a, a turn integrated into the end of that trill just to sort of finish that trill off nicely and uh, of course all the other notes outside of that must be unchanged so let's start with this one very nicely we've been given all the clef and key signature so the trill will begin on the D and then we've got a crotchet to fill and so mathematically it's going to have to work out and so if we have two groups of demi semis four demi semis make a quaver so that would be quaver quaver if we have two little groups D C sharp D C sharp so we've begun on the upper note and I think if we go back to the D, we can finish with a turn because then that will nicely fall onto the B by step, which is unchanged. 